what are the four parts of the English portion of the citizenship test? I'm Eric Widman. I'm an immigration lawyer. And in order to successfully become a U.S. citizen through naturalization, you must show that you meet the required minimum educational requirements. As laid out by Congress, you have to show that you are proficient at English and that you have a basic understanding of American civics, U.S. history, and our governmental system. And the English portion of the exam has four main subcategories. You've got to show that you can read, speak, write, and understand English. And the first three categories, reading, writing, and speaking English, are explicitly laid out in the USCIS policy manual and in the guidance for your interviewing officer. You're also told that you have to show you understand English, but that is also essentially implied in the three other explicit requirements. So we're going to look at each of the four requirements and show you what you need to do in order to pass this part of the test. So first we're going to look at reading English. You're going to be given one sentence at a time with up to three possible sentences if you need multiple attempts because you didn't read it correctly, you have three tries. The difficulty level of the sentence is often along the lines of, the president lives in the White House, or California is the largest state. Not difficult overall, and those are actual sentences my clients have been asked, but it can be difficult for those who have not studied English, who have not spoken English for that long. So when you're asked to read a sentence, it's going to show up and the officer will be looking for what he or she calls content words. You don't need to read the sentence perfectly, but you have to correctly and successfully read the most important words, the content words. And so content words would be, for example, president or White House, but an article or preposition like a or an or the, those are not required to be read successfully. You could even skip over a couple of those if you were nervous or were just not as smooth as you were hoping to be. But you have to demonstrate that you have proficiency with being able to read a sentence so the officer can understand what you're saying. Subcategory number two is being able to write English. And you're going to be given uh, a sentence. You'll, be, uh, have a, you'll have a sentence dictated to you. The officer will state the sentence. You'll have to write it down either on a piece of paper or what's become much more common is a stylus on a tablet. You have to use a special electronic pencil, a stylus on this electronic tablet they do that to automatically transfer over the sentence you've written into their computer system, but it can be rather unwieldy and difficult to write the sentence out. And so your handwriting can appear like you're a second or third grader, and that's okay. You don't have to have perfect penmanship. You just have to show that you are reasonably proficient. And when you write the sentence, you don't need perfection. You don't need to get every single word accurate, but the key words, the key meaning of the sentence has to be conveyed. You'll be given up to three attempts to successfully write the sentence down. And usually our clients get it on the first try, but you'll have three possible attempts to write that sentence in English. Category number three in the English portion is showing that you have the ability to speak English successfully and proficiently. This is part of the process as a whole of the interview. You're not given a specific sentence to speak English, for example. That's the reading portion of the exam. Instead, your officer interviewing you is going to be assessing if you can speak sufficiently clearly so that he or she can understand you. 
And when you're asked about these eligibility questions, are you able to communicate back that what's in your mind is what you're able to say in words in English to the, the officer? You have to be able to speak back the oath of citizenship at some point. So the officer is concerned that you won't be able to speak that. You will be asked to return after studying and becoming more proficient. Or in some cases, you might qualify for a waiver or an exception to the speaking requirement and the oath requirement in particular. Finally, category number four for the English requirements is your ability to understand what you're saying, your ability to understand English. So if you were somehow able to memorize certain words, but you didn't understand what you were saying or writing, that is not going to allow you to become a citizen. You won't be able to pass the English test without showing that you understand all of the words, the phrases, the sentences that you're writing and speaking. That's very much in line with what Congress intended that new citizens be proficient with English. They understandably want you to function well in voting and in your job and being a productive, supportive contributor to society. Hope this is helpful. Let us know if you have any questions and definitely take care.